But you know, one of the things that I've mentioned many times on the show, and I actually get a lot of flack from some objectivists for this, uh, is how much I admire Silicon Valley and how much I admire the people who work in Silicon Valley and the entrepreneurs and the creation. And even people who, I, I you know, politically, I'm completely opposed to, I don't know, Zuckerberg and, uh, and, and most of the CEOs of Silicon Valley. What I admire about these people is their sense of purpose. They have a vision. They have an idea and they dedicate it to that idea. And they work hard and they change the world by focusing, using their mind to achieve that vision that they have, to achieve that purpose that they've set for themselves. And they don't settle. So you don't find, uh, I don't know, Apple saying, okay, we, we, we did the personal computer. That's fine. We're done. Right? Steve Jobs had to do an iPhone and an iPad and an iWatch, and even though other watch came out after him. And he, he was trying to solve the problem of television, he would say. And, he, you know, he was always, always trying to solve problems, applying his mind constantly, constantly throughout his adulthood to problems that existed in the world. And, and drove himself, drove himself, worked incredibly hard, put the team together that he drove to work very, very hard in order to solve. So, I mean, the amount of respect I have for people like that is unbelievable versus armchair objectivists who sit at home and spend most of their time on Facebook and Twitter complaining about the world bitching and complaining about the risks and the dangers and, oh, my God, how bad things are, and using objectivism as an excuse for their own failure in life and in their careers. Right? And then blaming the people in Silicon Valley who actually have a life, have a career, have a purpose, have, have embraced Ayn Rand's core moral virtues implicitly. Complaining about those people because they get their politics wrong. Now, I complain about those people because they get their politics wrong. But first, I say, wow. First, I say, thank you. And first, I say, they are unbelievable moral people. Here's what Dr. Peacock writes in OPA about this, right? Ayn Rand is the first thinker to reject the mind-body dichotomy methodologically by reference to the theory of reality and of concepts. We'll get to that at some point. Not today. That is why she is also the first fully to practice the virtue of justice in the present context. She is the first to identify, in terms of philosophical system, the source of wealth, and therefore the proper estimate of those who create it. Next paragraph. A productive man is a moral man, period. Let me repeat that. A productive man is a moral man. In a more intellectually demanding and innovating field, he is the epitome of morality. He deserves to be admired accordingly. Oh, I love that paragraph. Let me repeat it because this so applies to Silicon Valley. A productive man is is a moral man. In the more intellectually demanding and innovative field, he is the epitome of morality. He deserves to be admired accordingly. Wow. And this relates to the idea of love of ability, which Ayn Rand had. Think about all the heroes in her books and think about all the talks to businessmen. The love of ability. I, mean, I love the people in Silicon Valley because of the amazing things that they create and they produce. Now, it's not limited to Silicon Valley. I love businessmen all over this country. But what is it? What does it say here? Whoops, where did it go? The more intellectually demanding and innovative fields, I mean, the valley and everything it represents is demanding, intellectually demanding. It's taking, cutting its science and turning it into products that make my life and your life and everybody's life better. It doesn't get any better than that. It doesn't get any more admirable than that. 